Hutchings, Thurston County Commissioner, and I'm going to read to you Fergus and the Night Before Christmas by Jean Abernathy. "'Twas the night before Christmas, the sky dark as ink, and I couldn't sleep, not even a wink. No visions of sugar plums, like the rhyme says. I don't even know what a sugar plum is. The stockings were hung by the wood stove once more, just in case Santa needed to use the back door. I was snuggled in bed, my heart all a tingle, when somewhere outside came a ring and a jingle. I jumped up to look for eight tiny reindeer. With my face on the window, my nose made a smear. And what should appear on this night so pristine but the craziest tandem of horses I've seen. They pulled a great sleigh, shiny green, shiny red. It was totally awesome. Oh my, what a sled. The harness, it sparkled and jingled and jangled and with buckles and bells all nicely fandangled. I counted them out as they soared through the heavens. Instead of eight horses, they numbered 11. With a snow-faced leader, so spooky and quick, I started to worry about old Saint Nick. This horse had one shoe and a little hay belly and googly eyes that were utterly silly. I surely love horses, but this was a fright. A truly fantastic, ridiculous sight. The whole team a mismatch of color and size. That Santa could drive them was the biggest surprise. But drive them he did. To his leader did shout, Easy there, Fergus. Don't make me fall out. His eyes didn't twinkle. His dimples weren't merry. The look on his face was a little bit scary. They circled the house, then down onto the roof, with the stomping and crashing of many a hoof. Has Santa gone crazy? I wondered in fear. These horses did drive, but they sure didn't steer. They clung to the gables, they hung from the eaves, and spread o'er the garden like fresh autumn leaves. As I stared dumbfounded at this sorry lot, I saw something possibly Santa did not. The one he called Fergus, the leader of course, made his way back to the littlest horse. She squirmed and she giggled, and wiggled as he unbuckled her harness and let her go free. She shuffled away and was soon out of sight. Had something gone wrong on their Christmas Eve flight? She had simply abandoned her teammates. What's more, she had stolen the Christmas wreath off our front door. I started to fret, to worry and ponder. Where was she going? How far would she wander? Could Santa continue without his whole team? Had Fergus been plotting some terrible scheme? If St. Nick was stuck on our roof with his load, how would he get to the kids down the road? Was Pony just hungry or running away or trying to get back to Santa's big sleigh? I stuck to the window pane, wondering whether Santa could put this whole mess together. A few little presents lay out in the snow 
But what of the stockings that hung down below? With a shudder, some dust and some drywall came down, and St. Nick took the lines, and he turned them for town. The sleigh gave a groan, and the roof did the same, and he whistled, and he shouted, and he called them by name. <laughs> Monique, Huey, Hup, bring on the muscle. On, Clevis, on, Dottie, look lively there, Russell. Look up, Fergus, step into it, Bart. And the whole team took off with a buck and a fart. <laughs> Lean into your collars, Bjorn and dear Case. We're heading for Cleveland, Ray. Hey, where is Grace? I froze in my slippers just watching them go with one empty harness that dangled below. I suppose as I viewed that incredible team, but that's cool for a small kid to have a big dream. Because as they flew into the sky dark as ink, I'm sure I saw Fergus look back with a wink. And there's the littlest pony with the kid in the room. Thank you for watching. And it's not on Zoom. <laughs>